It turns out that not everyone is entirely happy about the prospect of entering a new era of RPGs. Starfield and Baldur's Gate are massive, expansive titles that are set to redefine what it means to be a roleplay game. However, some developers are very concerned about what this might mean. Baldur's Gate 3, as cool as it looks, as much as we should celebrate what Larian has achieved, is not a baseline or standard for what games can be moving forward. It's an anomaly, much like the other mega games being made in this era of development. Now, I straight up disagree with what he's trying to say there, and I'll give my reasons for that in just a moment. I'll also talk about why I feel that we are moving into a new era for RPGs. Also, I want to thank everyone for continuing to watch this channel and continuing to support it. You do make a massive difference. And if you feel you can help out or want to help out, then do check that Patreon link in the video description below. It's massively appreciated. So that clip was from Zalavia Nelson Jr., studio head and creative director of Strange Scaffold. He went on to give a whole bunch of reasons as to why he feels that way, which by and large reduced down to budget, risk, as well as market pressures. It's a video which was prompted by a series of tweets he made a little while ago. Naturally, it caused quite a storm, which in turn was picked up by the gaming press. The article here goes on to say that Nelson concludes by saying players should not expect every game to be of the same caliber, as it sets up conditions to ensure other creators can't make games they love ever again. And this is backed up by a load of other developers from many different companies all throughout the industry. And we can just see a few of those tweets right here. Everyone feeling that Zalavia is making a very good point and that they completely agree. Now, the fact is that Zalavia is making a good point here. There is a lot of truth to what he's saying. If studios try and push beyond their means, then it's very likely that they are going to take undue risks and cause themselves a problem, eventually maybe even closing themselves down. We saw the same happen with Forspoken just recently, as well as Gollum, not to mention a whole bunch of other titles this year. We'll get more into that in just a moment. But the fact remains, regardless of whether developers and studios take these risks, that's not really what players care about. Players compare or care about quality. They care about good games. They care about great titles. Whether these titles have massive budgets or teams with huge, vast experience behind them is kind of besides the point. It's quite natural that players' expectations will be set accordingly when a genre redefining title comes out. And they don't necessarily have to be big budget titles. Minecraft was a small title created by one man on a shoestring budget. Look what happened there. It completely redefined the industry. Stardew Valley is another game which has done the same. From Software did very similar when they come out with the whole Souls franchise. Yes, an established studio, but they're putting out a new idea that hadn't really been tried before. An idea which really resonated with people and then redefined what players expected from games from that point forward. So my personal opinion here, budget as well as huge studio experience is only a part of the equation. Another example is Disco Elysium, an absolutely fantastic RPG, one of the best I've played in fact, and that was released by a relatively small studio unknown to many people in fact, and yet it went on to generate a huge amount of revenue for that studio. It also redefined what players expected from that type of story focused game. Another point here which I feel that these developers are completely missing is the fact that Lorian Studios have not always been a massive studio with huge resources behind them. Whilst it's fair to point that out now, that is true in terms of Baldur's Gate 3, historically, well, the studio has faced issues. Back in 2014 or 2015, Lorian Studios almost faced bankruptcy over the development of Divinity Original Sin. That turned out very well for them, but they're a studio that take risks. Um, Lorian initially had one and a half million euros to spend on Divinity Original Sin and hoped to build it on a budget of three million. In the end, the studio spent four and a half million euros to get the game made. Now, this is kind of counter to the point that was made early on, that studios are required to make um, tens of millions or even hundreds of millions to make a successful game. That isn't true. Divinity Original Sin largely redefined the player's expectations. And it all come from a studio that at the time may not have had as much experience as they got now, and they did it on a small budget with far fewer resources. When you really dig into it then, what these developers are saying from a whole variety of different studios right across the world is that developing games is hard. 
who would have thought? And that budgets and um, player expectations play a big part in whether a game can succeed or not. Again, who would have thought? The concept then that it's unfair for your lesser product to be compared to a superior product is ridiculous in the extreme. It doesn't mean that you necessarily need to compete with that superior product or keep up with it. You just need to focus on what it is you're doing and make the best possible version of your very own thing. In short, make good games, not rubbish ones. My take on this then is that yes, I do agree with some of the points these developers are making. Game development is certainly very hard and quite often the players have unreasonable and unrealistic expectations. But by the same token, that doesn't mean it's easy for you to say it's unfair for my product to be compared to this superior product. Unfortunately, life just doesn't work that way. The truth is, get on with making the best product you possibly can and just maybe the customer, the audience, will find something appealing within it. At any rate, let's move on from that subject and look at just what makes Baldur's Gate 3 so special, at least potentially. Baldur's Gate has an estimated playtime of 75 hours according to the studio and has around about 174 hours total in cinematic cutscenes. Now, not all of these will play. It depends on how you actually approach the game because there's a lot of different ways to how the game can play out, both well, very early on. You've actually got a lot of uh, unique options that I won't spoil that in terms of story will dramatically change how things play out. And that all depends on your decisions and your actions. And this is the cause that the game takes throughout its entire play cycle. So, yeah, as you can imagine, that leads to a lot of potential different endings. Now, over the years, games with different endings have gained headlines and been quite a big focus of attention. Mass Effect 3 promised a variety of endings. We all know how that turned out. Witcher 3, though, is perhaps one of the best examples, with a whole range of different endings depending on how you played out and uh, the decisions you made across your journey. Baldur's Gate 3 is taking a similar approach, except the amount of variations to the endings here is significantly more, perhaps to any other game ever released. Lorient Studios have confirmed a total of 17,000 different variations and possible endings. Yeah, that's a massive amount, isn't it? And perhaps this then starts to give a little bit of a hint as to why some developers and other studios are getting a little bit concerned about just what this title is delivering and how the heck they're going to keep up in the future. Hint, they don't need to keep up, they just need to make good games. Quite naturally then, there's a lot of anticipation, both from me as well as a lot of other people out there, for the release of Baldur's Gate 3. But unfortunately, regardless of how much anticipation your title has, when you're going up against Starfield, things get a little bit dicey. So, therefore, Lurian Studios have moved the release date of Baldur's Gate 3 forward to the 3rd of August. Rather interestingly though, the release date is different for the PlayStation 5 version of Baldur's Gate, which is set for a release on the 6th of September, the exact same day of Starfield no less. I feel this is a pretty smart marketing move because fans of the PlayStation are very likely going to be wanting a good RPG when Starfield releases, and if they don't have access to an Xbox or a PC, they may be looking for an alternative. And it just so happens that Baldur's Gate 3 is probably the best alternative that anyone could ever hope for. Also interestingly, the game Baldur's Gate 3 is not going to be releasing on Xbox, at least not immediately. The reason for that seems to be somewhat complex, but it appears to be down to parity requirements between the Xbox Series S and the Series X. Whilst it's perfectly okay for different titles to have different frame rates, different performance, as well as different graphical options, when it comes to uh, gameplay options themselves and the game as a whole, there does need to be parity across both consoles. And this has proven to be a bit of a problem. The uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is a very graphically intense game. And when you're in built-up areas such as cities, there's a lot of NPCs and other activities going on. What's more, the game can be played cooperatively, so you can jump into those areas with friends. And it seems this is the point of contention, potentially, for the Xbox Series S. That it requires a lot of resources to process all of this data in that sort of cooperative multiplayer environment. Now, whilst we can only speculate and that is the exact reason, we do know and have had confirmation that the issue does come down to parity. So... The issue I've just mentioned is really the only one that actually makes any sense. Either way, unfortunately, it means that for now, 
there's no release date for the Xbox version of Baldur's Gate 3. At any rate, that brings us to the end of this video. Do let me know in the comment section below what you're looking forward to. Are you going to be trying Baldur's Gate 3? Are you going to be playing Starfield? Do you want both? Neither. What's going on with that? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.